Hey guys, Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Today's video, I just wanted to share with you guys a cool little script I created called the Dojo Extruder Script. And essentially what the script does is it allows you to extrude things in After Effects to suit away, you know, they're originally stacking up a whole bunch of layers in a very automated way. And um, you have a few options to play around with. But before we get started, I'm gonna go ahead and thank the great folks over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website. For a free trial and 10% off, head over to squarespace.com and use the promo code DOJO11 at checkout. So I was working on a template here and I needed some 3D text, but I didn't really want to use Element 3D just because it wouldn't be very convenient for a lot of customers who don't have Element 3D. And the Element 3D licensing for templates is a very, you know, pain in the butt. So I didn't really want to use Element 3D or any other plugins. I wanted to do it within After Effects. So, you know, of course, there's the classic way of doing it, but it took a lot of time. And I've shown that method a few times in my past tutorials here. So I created a script to automate the process. So let me show you what it does here. So first of all, let me just show you, you know, this preview here. So I won't be going over how I created the environment and all that stuff, but I will show you guys how I created this 3D text here with the nice bevels and this transition right here. So this is pretty cool. Most of the time, 3D, you know, 3D extruded stuff in the After Effects, you don't really have the, you know, the ability to break things up and create this pretty much dynamic, interesting, you know, text animation here. But you know, I you will be able to do this within After Effects all by itself with no plugins, you know, purely After Effects tools, just automated with a script that I created here. So we'll take a look at how to create this 3D text only here. So let me go ahead and get started with a new composition. We'll go to new composition and we'll call this the 3D extruded comp. And you know, we'll make it 720p and 10 seconds long. Hit OK. And then let's go ahead and create our 3D text here. So we'll create a new text. So we'll call this one, you know, 3D text. Let's go ahead and just, you know, scale it down and then we'll align it. Make sure it's center aligned and we'll just align it to the middle here. So now that we have our 3D text. And the first thing you want to do is I always like to pre-compose things before I extrude them so that things become very procedural. So just pre-compose and we'll call this the source text here. And essentially we're doing this because if you ever wanted to change whatever we extrude, we can always go into the composition and do it. So now that we have this pre-compose, let's go ahead and hop into the Dojo Extruder script, which is available for free at the creativedojo.net. So this is pretty cool here. And this is version one, so there are you know limited options here, but I will probably be updating this uh, pretty frequently here. So here's the Dojo Extruder script. So first of all, let's go ahead and select the layer that we want to extrude, which is this comp here. We have the option to set the number of extrusion copies. Now this is very important because you know depending on how large your text is and you know or how large your logo is and how much you are zooming up to it, you want to change this number. So usually a number between 30 to 60 is pretty sufficient here. So in this case, our text is going to be pretty you know close to the camera. So we'll set it to around 50. Essentially, the higher the number, the you know the higher quality you have, the more number of copies you have to work with here. So you'll see why in a second. So we'll set it to 50. Uh, we have the enable shine hide, which will automatically hide the extrusion copies, and then we also have the enable motion blur for layers. So we'll keep those selected as a convenience here, and we'll just hit go. So give it a little bit, and it should create your 3D extruded text. Now this is pretty cool here with no effort, pretty much. So we'll go ahead and just close the extruder script. As you can see, it creates an extruder controls the null object here, as well as one source text, but it's actually just the front face here. And this is here just because, you know, some people like to, you know, apply certain effects to the front face of the text, so that's there for convenience. But there's actually a lot of extrusion copies here. As you can see, they're all shied and hide here. And essentially, we are duplicating this source text 50 times. We're stacking them on top of each other, and we're creating that traditional pseudo 3D extrusion within After Effects. And that's pretty cool. It can be kind of slow at some times, but you know, I think it's worth it here in this particular scenario here, if you don't have Element 3D. So here's it's the source text. As you can see, it applies some effects here. What you really want to focus on is the extruder controls. We have a lot of options here, the extrusion depth. So, you know, if this is too extruded for you, you can actually compress it here. So let's say that you wanted the extrusion depth to be like 10. If you do that, and uh, let's go ahead and rotate it here. As you can see, when we rotate the null, it actually rotates everything. So this is pretty 
convenient here. As you can see, you know, things are starting to break apart and you can see individual copies. And that's because we didn't create enough copies for the extrusion right here. So what we can do is we can actually compress all this together. So we'll set it to like three. And essentially what that does is it kind of compresses everything in a smaller space. So we're not gonna see any, uh, you know, individual copies. And so we have this nice clean effect. So if you wanted to create, a, you know, a lot of extrusion, you want to create a lot of extrusion copies to work with here. So that's pretty convenient here that we can play with the spacing between each copy. So two or three is a pretty good extrusion depth here. We also have the bevel amount. So if we set it to like, you know, five, you can see that we have, you know, a strong bevel here. I usually set it to two or three, depending on the size of the text or the logo. And then we also have the length amount here. So if we set this to a positive number, like three, things are going to be lit from the back. As you can see, we have light coming from the back. If we set this to a negative number, like let's say negative five, we're going to get that nice dark shading in the back. And this is what I think most people want here. So we'll set it to like negative three, which is a good value here. The light fall off is essentially what it is. If you set it to a smaller number, I know this doesn't really make sense. I need to fix this in version uh, you know, two, uh, but a smaller number like 0.1 will make things very, very, very soft as you see here. If we set it to the maximum value of one, things are gonna be very, very sharp and hard and very contrasty. So usually a number from 0.3 to 0.5 does pretty well. We'll set it to 0.5, pretty soft shadow here, maybe like point and then the light direction controls the light direction of the light so you can see the bubble light here will be from the bottom set it to zero and then the soften blur essentially applies a fast blur to all the copies and essentially this will kind of fix some of the uh, you know the cracking issues or you know the the rough edges at certain times you may not need to use this but you know this is pretty handy here so that's essentially all the controls for you know the extruder here. Let me show you how to stylize this thing pretty quickly. Uh, so if we hop into the source text and we go and duplicate it, we can call this one you know the actual text. We'll call this one the stroke, and uh, we'll go in here and we can apply a quick stroke to this. So we'll select this kind of uh, square here, and we'll set the stroke to you know a dark color so we can kind of see it. And my stroke is set to 10. This is a pretty good value. Maybe set it to like 8. So we get kind of, this kind of nice dark stroke. And the reason why I did it in a separate text layer is so we can apply a ramp effect to it if we wanted to, to create a more you know diverse and colorful stroke. So if we apply a gradient to it, you can see, as you can see, we can you know create some pretty fancy bevels here. And then we can apply the gradient ramp to you know the front of the text. And you know, we'll just make this quick little gradient here. And just by doing something simple like this, you get a completely different look. So we'll hop back into the 3D extruder comp, and as you can see, we get you know a more interesting look, and everything's extruded in a nice way. So this is pretty cool. And of course, you can you know add textures to this thing. You can you know uh, you know do some cool little designs. You know you can do a lot of things. Add some more strokes to create you know better looking bevels. But essentially, work in this comp here, and you should get some pretty cool stuff here. So that's pretty cool. So before I show you guys how to create that cool little 3D text uh, animation from the preview, I want to go ahead and thank the great folks over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional online website, store, or portfolio. They have over 20 highly customizable and professionally designed templates. With their click and drag interface, adding content is a breeze, and starting at just $8 a month you can get a free domain name if you sign up for a year. You can start your free trial of Squarespace by going to squarespace.com. And when you do decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure you use promo code DOJO11 to get 10% off the life of your order and support the dojo. Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional website. So back to the tutorial here, I want to show you guys how to create this flyby effect. It kind of just breaks into individual characters here and forms the text. And this is a pretty cool thing that you can do this within After Effects using no plugins here. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and disable or actually just delete the stroke here. We'll just redo that later. We'll work with this here. We'll go to the toggle down right here and we'll go to the animate and first of all, we'll hit enable per character 3d and then we'll go to the animate here and we'll also select the position 
and that will create an animator one as well as a range selector with our position here. So essentially we want to set this to a pretty high value, so uh, maybe like negative 3000. And what that will do is force everything to be at negative 3000 in Z space. And if we go into the offset, we can, we can offset that. So as you can see, we're pretty much offsetting each character. So at 100%, they're normal, but at 0%, they're at negative 3000 in Z space. So we'll set it to this value here. And you know, if we go to the advance, see right now things are very procedural. If we go to the advance here and we go to randomize order, that would just randomize everything. And then we can go from shape from square to ramp up. And what this will do is create a very, very nice effect here. So as you can see, things are more randomized. And of course, you can do this with the rotation property as well to get some very, very interesting looks. But let's go ahead and animate the offset here. So at the very beginning, hit keep for the offset. And we'll just make sure they're out of frame here. We'll move about a second and a half. Set to 100%. So what we have here is this nice text transition. And if we just duplicate this and you know add a stroke to it, you know we'll go in here and en enable the stroke and we'll set it to you know eight and then we'll change the gradient ramp to a dark color here so maybe something like this and then change this something like this and then we go back into the extruded comp you can see that we get that nice transition here now, sometimes you may get pixelated you know, results because by default, After Effects doesn't really rasterize or collapse transformation for these comps right here. So you can actually go and enable the, you know, the continued rasterization for all the extruded copies as well as the source text here. But most of the time you're doing really fast animations and you don't really need to do that. So that's something to keep in mind. In the next update, I will probably you know, create some kind of button that will automate that process as well. But just to inform you, if you're getting pixelated results, try to collapse the transformation for all the source text as well as the text in here. So just to enhance the effect, we can also animate the position of the control null here. So as you can see, everything is parented to the extruder control. So if we just start at the beginning here and just kind of set this back to like negative, you know, a thousand or something like that. Hit a keyframe, we'll move a second and a half like before. We'll set this to zero. It kind of forces all these comps to do the same thing. So it's essentially moving all these comps in Z space as well. And we'll just easy ease this. We'll go to animation, apply animation assistant here. So, and then hit easy ease. It's essentially moving all these duplicates here. And then if we enable the motion blur, you should get some pretty nice results here. So I actually just changed this keyframe here to about negative 3000, uh, just to kind of enhance the effect here. So if I do a quick RAM preview. So as you can see, we get that really nice, intense animation. And again, if you want to make it a little bit more fancy, you can also add rotation to these animations here. So add some rotation, that look pretty nice. Add some texture, add some glows. You know, you can create some pretty interesting things just using this. I think this is a pretty cool way to create 3D text within After Effects without using any plugins. Of course, if you have Element 3D or you know Metal Shapeshifter, go ahead and use those. This is by no means an alternative. I'm not recommending this method over Element 3D's method because it's a lot faster and it supports OpenGL and uses your GPU. This is really CPU intensive. It uses a lot of you know resources to pull this off because there's a lot of layers here. But if you have no other option, if you don't have Element 3D, this is a really great way to create 3D text. And the Dojo Extruder script just kind of automates the process. Very helpful if you create video hype templates. So that's pretty much it. Dojo Extruder version 1. Check it out at creativedojo.net. Absolutely free. My name is Vincent Wynn from the Creative Dojo. And I'll see you guys next time.